closing up. I was on my own. I had to close the jail down and walked into the room at the back behind me in the corner on the right. It felt like somebody pushed me. And uh, I turned around, there was nobody there. So I walked off, uh, closed everything up and walked away. And uh, Bulldog Tours just tours here. And about 10 years later, I was talking to one of the Bulldog Tours guides who come through every evening. And I said, I don't like that room. And she said, what? why don't you like that room? Well, I had an experience in there. And she said, oh, that's the room where such and such, and I, she gave me a name, I can't remember it now, but he likes to push people. So we're in the old city jail now, uh, here on the corner of Magazine and Franklin Street. I built in 1802. This was used consecutively as a jail until 1939. Originally, there were 18-foot walls around the entire perimeter. Uh, during the Civil War, there were Union POWs kept here, including the 54th Massachusetts Regiment. Uh, prior to the Civil War, slaves waiting to be auctioned were kept out here in the jail yard. But uh, this jail housed some of Charleston's most notorious criminals, pirates and bootleggers and murderers and you name it. This is where they were kept. It was used until 1939, and at that point, they had built a new jail, and this jail shut down. And it sat vacant for 60 years until 1999. They came in, stabilized it, and a couple years later after that, we started giving tours here. In 1998, the American College of the Bill Knots bought the jail to turn into a campus. This was our home for a number of years. It was an interesting building to try and work with. It has every building material within its structure. It's got stone, it's got brick, it's got plaster, it's got metal, it's got wood. And so it was an ideal uh, building to uh, train people how to restore buildings. Yeah, it's absolutely one of the most haunted places. And, and I don't have a counter, it's hard to say like how many ghosts I'm counting in this room. I mean, nobody's really going to know that. but based on places that our tour guides take guests and the feedback that we get from guests and all these paranormal research outfits, including the ones on TV. They've all been to Charleston, they've all been on all of our tours, and this place here is the one that they get the most uh, interaction with. And even when, I remember when this was just a project and they were stabilizing it, they had to get rid of uh, the concrete floors and ceilings in here. and these carpenters would be in here, these contractors, throughout the day sawing and cutting and, and putting these floors in. And at the end of every day, there would be two or three inches of sawdust throughout the entire building. They would set the alarms, lock the doors, and go home. And then the next morning, when they came back, they would often find hundreds of footprints through here. Different size feet, you know, bare feet, different size shoes, boots, all through here. And they knew that they were the last ones that were in here. And you know, it's instances like that, that even if you're a skeptic, you're like, yeah, this place has something going on. So there's a story associated with this building and it was truly the only ghost story that I knew when we started giving tours here in 2001 and had heard it my whole life. It's the story of Lavinia Fisher. The legend is that she was South Carolina's first female serial killer. And we know for a fact that she was housed here. We know for a fact that her and her husband, John, ran a hotel on the outskirts of Charleston called the Six Mile Inn. The legend is that they were poisoning or killing some of their guests and burying them underneath the house. It was kind of the trial of the century. A lot of drama, a lot of you know sensationalized media. And every day at the courthouse, which still exists today, there were hundreds of people. People were very intrigued with Lavinia. Not only was she a female and she was charged with murder, but she was one of the prettiest ladies in town. Uh, she had won several beauty pageants and you know, she's young and a lot of folks thought that there's no way they're ever gonna execute a, a pretty lady like this. Jury and the judge came back and they were found guilty for their crimes. One of her final requests was to be executed in her wedding dress. So there's this beautiful lady in a long you know, wedding dress and they shackled her hands and her feet and she led the procession of thousands of people from this building to where the gallows were up King Street and when they get to the gallows she eventually walks up the steps they take the shackles off of her hands and her feet and 
and she steps up onto the box. She reaches up, grabs the noose, puts it around her own neck, and she tightens it up. And, and the executioner asked Lavinia if she had any final words before she was to be hanged. And she yells out into the crowd, if any of y'all have a message for the devil, give it to me and I'll deliver it to him personally. She jumps off the box and the rope catches her neck and she dies. That was in February of 1820. Now, supposedly within hours after Lavinia's execution, inmates here in the old city jail that had no knowledge of her wearing a wedding dress. They claim to see the image of a lady in a long dress floating through the walls of the jail here. We've had numerous paranormal investigations and all these TV shows come here. Some of them didn't even know that story and they would very quickly say, there's somebody, there's a spirit in this building of a lady. Of any official story, absolutely will make a believer of you, uh, of anybody. Within structures and buildings, there's history. And I think that history has a uh, palpability to it. There's something within this building that uh, speaks to some stuff that has happened to this building. And so whether you believe it or not, I think there's a, there's a sense of, of, of weight in this place.